So this year's AWS reInvent brought a lot of new products and features to the AWS catalog that will be game changers for a lot of people. Which of the announcements are you most excited about? AWS just keeps adding more and more to their catalog and it's great, it's wonderful. They add lots and lots of new stuff all the time. Well, this year's AWS reInvent had a bit of both. It had some new products and some new features and today I thought that I would share with you my favorite amongst those announcements. So briefly, what do we have? Well, first off, we have LightSail, which is AWS offering you a fixed price for a fixed set of EC2 resources, which allows them to compete with the likes of DigitalOcean and Linode. And then the Systems Manager, which has created a lot of controversy as to whether you even need configuration management anymore. The answer is yes. Athena introduces SQL to S3, which is just crazy. Now it's just made S3 even more powerful and even more useful. And if you're a scientist or someone working with large numbers and you need to crunch a big batch of them, well, AWS Batch will be perfect for you as it handles all of the scaling and clustering of all of the EC2 resources for you, so you don't have to worry about that. And CloudFront is getting Lambda. It's called Lambda at Edge, and it allows you to process your connections right at the CloudFront Edge. And finally, Postgres comes to AWS Aurora. That means that you'll be able to take advantage of all of the fine tuning and scalability that's previously only been available to the MySQL crowd. So, Lightscale, it's DigitalOcean, Linode, however you wanna look at it, on EC2. Fixed resources for a fixed price tag basically takes away all of the guesswork around spinning up an EC2 instance and seeing how much it's gonna cost you. They got options ranging from $5 to $80, and I'm pretty certain that there's an option to suit everyone. For me, it's the fixed allocation of bandwidth included in the price that's the important part. I think that's where a lot of the guesswork was. With Systems Manager, AWS have enabled you the option to very easily control and manage the configuration of your operating systems, patch management, and your whole inventory around your ET2 resources. It's certainly not a replacement for Ansible and Puppet, but it will certainly shake things up a little bit. Essentially, the state manager allows you to implement configuration ranging from your operating system firewall through to your applications. And the inventory system lets you keep track of what's actually in your network by allowing you to query the inventory and see what's in your estate what applications are installed, what the state looks like, et cetera, throughout, which will give a lot of visibility and a lot of insight, which is great. I think that's a really, really cool feature. So yeah, Athena is introducing SQL to S3. It's a bit odd, but it's also really, really cool. It's really hard for me to explain in a video. You best actually getting over there and checking it out yourself. Maybe we're about to see an S3 backed database. If you've got lots of batch work that needs doing, such as crunching numbers, or perhaps you're doing some kind of scientific study and you need to crunch a lot of data in a huge cluster but can't quite afford the time or the money to set up that cluster, then AWS Batch is for you. Now you can just throw all that data at AWS Batch and all the EC2 resources and clustering is all done for you and it will automatically scale to match the workload that you've given it and it'll automatically descale as well. And it'll even pop off and disappear once the work is done. Now, I personally don't have a need for this. However, I do have friends that do crunch those numbers and it's gonna be really exciting to see if, the, if and how they take advantage of this service. And finally, for me, it's Lambda at Edge. It's CloudFront having Lambda right at the Edge locations. Now, this doesn't seem like a big one, but it's actually a genius move from AWS. This means we should actually see a drop in latency as that computation doesn't now have to go right into the AWS network, pop over to Lambda or some other EC2 resource, get a response and then come all the way back to the edge again. It's done right at the edge, so we should see a drop in latency. Of course, there were many more announcements. However, they're my favorite ones. They're the ones that I'm most excited about, and I hope that I've been useful in delivering those to you today. If you enjoyed the video, then please subscribe for more and give us a like, and of course, have a great day. Do I look weird now that I don't have a mustache?